Another photographer in the movie, uh, and I don't remember his name, but he is the, he's a Vietnamese uh, photo- fellow who uh, actually yeah. shot the footage of that also was probably the other famous photo from the wall war when a, uh, a Vietnamese girl is running after the napalm attack. Mm-hmm. And um, so he's in that in the Nick, footage, too. His name is Nick Ut. And Nick actually was just 19 years of age when he won a Pulitzer for the napalm girl. Now, he was very lucky uh, to even be around to take that picture. Can you tell us that story about the chopper? Uh, oh, yes. Well, uh, before that, he was supposed to get on a, a helicopter to take a ride out of Saigon. And um, another photographer, Henry Hewitt, had asked him if he could, wouldn't mind giving up his seat because he needed to be on that ride. And um, Nick said, oh, okay, all right, take my seat. And that helicopter was shot down, and Henry Hewitt, uh, the photographer, was killed. Today we are talking with Susan Morgan Cooper. She's a filmmaker. Uh, she has a film, The Unlikely Weapon, which is about Eddie Adams, a photographer of some great renown. Uh, Susan, tell us a little bit about what brings you to town, where your film is showing, and uh, the events surrounding it. Ah, well, I'm I'm very fortunate to have my film show at the at the Gene Siskel Film Center, and it's going to be showing tomorrow afternoon at 4:15, and I'll be doing a Q&A after that, and then I think it's showing on Tuesday and then Thursday. And we're going to give away three pairs of tickets today. Uh, So I'm going to encourage people uh, to call WLUW. That would be 773-508-9589. And I'm not sure if there's a specific call-in time, but uh, apparently not. Just uh, call in and get get your tickets. That's three pairs of tickets uh, call 773-508-9589. Uh, Susan Morgan Cooper, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you came from, what you do, and what your plans are. Oh, boy, that's a tall order. Um, I came from a very tiny village in Wales uh, that's... Un- We're probably related. Unpronounceable. <laughs> um, the village is called Anis Tower, and... My parents told me that during the war, the, the Yankees couldn't pronounce the name, so they used to call it On a Star. So a star. when I was growing up, I would say that, you know, I came from On a Star. Um, I always had a, a leaning towards theater and film. My, my parents, my dad was an electrical engineer, my mom a nurse. And they used to put on plays to make money for charity. And um, I became an actress first, and then a film editor, and uh, now a documentary filmmaker. And I became a documentary filmmaker because I met this 16-year-old girl um, whose mom had died. She was Croatian, and her mom had died during the Balkan War. And uh, she was suicidal. And I decided that I wanted to make a film about her. And um, we went back to Croatia during the fighting. And um, I'm very happy to say I I think I made a big difference in her life. I helped to put her through university. And I went to her wedding a few months ago. And she calls me mom. (laughs) So um, after that, I, I just was hooked into documentaries. Yeah. Uh, one of the things in your film, An Unlikely Weapon, that I, I really, uh, maybe because I have a, a son who's, uh, I have a number of sons, but one of them who's really into photography, yes. uh, is the footage that you have of uh, Eddie Adams' son. And uh, uh, he, he's talking about his dad. Can you yes. talk a little bit about uh, your experience shooting footage with him, what he was like, and some of the things that he says in your film? Um. August is a very, very shy boy. He's 19 now, and um, actually he has outstanding qualities, just like his dad. He's very, um, has a lot of integrity, but he, um, he's a very good photographer. He's 
done an incredible series of photographs of the New York subway. Um, but it's a heavy mantle to try and follow in your dad's footsteps, you know, as a photographer. Right now, he's going to culinary school, so he's feeding all the family very well. And um, he's very, very shy and reticent. And I think I started to interview him at the very, very beginning of the movie. And he didn't want to talk on camera, you know, I could understand because it was very shortly after his dad's death. And it was like, it was, honestly, it was such hard work trying to pull anything out of him. And then, thank God, um, my editor is a young man called Isaac Hagee. And he used to hang out with August quite a bit. And... One day at the bathhouse, I said to Isaac, they set up the lights and everything was good, and I said to Isaac, you know, just just you talk to him. I have a feeling, you know, I, I, I knew the questions I wanted to ask. I said, you just hang out with him and see if you can pull it out of him. And I think um, some of the sweetest parts uh, Isaac Hagee got out of him that day yeah those were moving and uh, I won't give away the ending but uh, the the son is there uh, with the uh, with his dad's hat yes and uh, yeah. you mentioned the bathhouse and yes. it's a topic that we mentioned often on this show because I am an aficionado of bathhouses uh, but you uh, tell us a little bit about Eddie Adams and when he came back he came back from Vietnam. He went back to Vietnam. He went off. He shot lots of other wars. Uh, he ended up uh, finding an old building. It was an old bathhouse. Tell us a little yeah. bit about what, uh, what, how that came to be and what he did with that bathhouse and what went on in there and what's with it today. Um, the bathhouse, actually, when Eddie bought it, was an absolute disaster. It was this run-down, crappy old bathhouse with graffiti all over it. And um, it had been on the market, I think, for about six years, and no one wanted to buy it. And um, Eddie looked at it, and he had a feeling, I think it was, it was a chop shop in the basement. Um, they would bring these old, you know, wrecked cars and chop them up and everything in the basement. And it was just a mess. And he asked a friend what he should do, and the friend said, well, if I were you, I'd borrow a million dollars. So, because that place is a piece of caca, you know? And so Eddie did. He borrowed a ton of money, and I think it was two years later, um, that photographer went to see the bathhouse, and it was just incredible. And now if you see it, it's so uptown. I mean, it's a stunning building. And the thing is, every day of the week, there will be some famous photographer, some famous celebrity or world leader there at the bathhouse being shot, you know. It's really a remarkable place. 